Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Uh, got a little project uh, today we're going to be working on uh, right here at the museum, and I'm still kind of getting things ready uh, to do some gear cutting on this horizontal milling machine. So, uh, you know, I came out here a couple of weeks ago, actually. I, you know, I pretty much get to work in the shop on Saturday, so I came out to set up my dividing head to get started, and that's when I realized I wanted to tear into this milling machine to do some work. We got that done over the last couple of weeks. Uh, but as I was setting up the dividing head, uh, I realized that I had a little problem uh, that I think is pretty going to be a pretty easy fix for us, and that's going to be the project day of solving this, this uh, problem. So let me zoom you in on the dividing head, and we'll tell you what's going on, and we're going to tell you what the solution is. So I picked up this dividing head a couple of years ago in a little trade that I did with a gentleman, and uh, it's interesting that when I got this dividing head, it was literally in a bucket, completely taken apart. Um, and he assured me that all the parts were there, that that's how he received it, and he wasn't able to figure out how to put it together. So anyway, I was, uh, I think I had a machinist vice that he was gonna buy from me for about a hundred bucks, and uh, I ended up saying, I'll tell you what, I'll take the dividing head and take a chance on it. And I took it home, and over several weeks, I was able to figure out how to put it back together. In fact, I've got a video uh, that I did some time back showing how to disassemble and reassemble this. Uh, dividing head uh, that I learned how to do trying to figure out how to put it back together. Uh, it's completely functioning now. I've, I've actually never used it in a real job, uh, but everything is, is, is great on the dividing head. So when I got the dividing head, it also came with the uh, tail stock or foot stock, as it's sometimes called, uh, to go with it. And I always assumed that it was for this dividing head, uh, but when I came out here to set things up, I realized real quickly there was a problem. And, you know, these, the, the, the live center here or in the dead center on the footstock, they should be at the same height. They should line up. And uh, so what I have basically been able to determine very quickly is, is that this uh, footstock is not original or not a match uh, to this dividing head. So this is a brown and sharp type dividing head. I have no idea what this footstock came off of. And uh, I really did think that they, they all went together anyway. I was a little surprised when I found this out. So uh, what do I do? Well, I got a couple of options, I guess. I can uh, go on the search and find the correct foot stock to go with this uh, dividing head, or I can make do with what I got. And uh, I'm gonna opt for the latter. We're gonna make do with what we have. So uh, the, the project for today is that I gotta build a, uh, basically a little extension piece to go up underneath this so that these parts will line up. So uh, I've got a piece of material here. Um, this is a piece of mystery material. I have no idea what it, where, or I know where it came from in a sense. It, it was, there was a bar of this material that was donated to the museum about a year or so ago from a gentleman. Um, I think that this material came off a of military surplus. I have no idea what it was. Uh, you can see it's got this uh, brown surface on the outside, which looks like you know a light layer of rust. But I really think this is a, this, a, a scale. This, I think this was a rolled off, uh, a piece of rolled material, hot rolled material or so. But what's interesting is, is uh, when we got it, it had been lopped off, been cut off on this end right here. And uh, you can see it's all nice and shiny. This has been sitting on the metal rack for over a year. Um, in the, the outside part of the shop, metal rust out there uh, very easily, and this has absolutely no rust on it at all. So I don't think it's, I, I think it's some type of uh, alloy, a steel alloy. Um, a magnet does stick to it, so it's, it's not, I don't think it's stainless. Uh, I, I guess there are a couple of grades of stainless that, that are magnetic. I don't know what it is. Uh, I do know that it's pretty darn hard. It took a while for the, the bandsaw to, to cut it off when I cut it off on this end. Uh, it, it cut it, but it just, it took a lot longer than it probably should have. So, uh, but anyway, we're gonna build it out of this. Uh, and basically, I'm gonna go in here and just clean up the outside edges on it. And then we're gonna have to mill a good bit of this down uh, to get to the right height. Uh, and I'm also going to go ahead and mill into this uh, some T-slots, so one on the bottom that will fit into this, uh, the groove on my mill. And then there's also, we're gonna mill a, a slot in the top that will register 
in this groove on the bottom of my footstock uh, so that it will all fit together very nicely. So we're going to make it all fit together like a glove. I've done some measurements. Uh, I know where I've got to go with this thing. I've got a little chicken scratch straw in here that kind of tells me what I want to do. Uh, and we're going to do it. So let's uh, get over to the uh, vertical milling machine and uh, we're going to start cleaning this thing up and carving out the part that we want that is hidden inside of this block of steel. We're going to start by um, squaring everything up on this block of steel um, and I know these cuts are not square on the end so I've got it set up in the vise. I got a, a machinist square back here along this back edge just to kind of get it lined up. It's not absolutely critical that it be perfect but I want it to look good so uh, we're going to do this real quick and we'll just fuzz off this edge. We're just going to get it cleaned up. Uh, the length on this needs to be around six inches but again it's not critical. Uh, on these outside dimensions, the, the main critical uh, measurement is going to be the thickness of this that we end up with, and we'll be working on that in a bit. So uh, I'm going to be using this uh, new shell mill that I got, and this uh, came from uh, Dakota Hunt. Let me zoom you in a little bit more where you can see that. So uh, this shell mill is the one that Dakota Hunt sent me a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I've been real ex uh, excited about the possibility of using this on some projects. Uh, this is a Kenametal uh, Harvey uh, type mill and uh, it's, uh, I've just got inserts in the bottom because I'm basically just going to be using it as a face mill but you can actually put rows of inserts in here for doing side milling as well as bottom milling. Uh, and uh, he sent along some inserts and the ones that are in here are supposed to be for steel. He sent some if, if the inserts were true to what the containers that they were in are, and I'm assuming they were, uh, this one is a grade for cutting steel. They also sent a grade for cutting aluminum and I think one for cutting cast iron. Uh, but uh, anyway, I put these uh, steel cutters in here and uh, we're going to be giving this a try. This is the first time that I've used uh, this new shell mill. And again, I'm excited about trying it out. All right, so we got this thing all squared up. Um, it's cleaned up on all four sides. Didn't quite clean up at the very tops on the sides, but I'm gonna be milling that down anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, but next thing I wanna do here is go ahead and, and lay out. I wanna have a, a slot, a T-slot, that'll be sticking up uh, 5 eighths inch wide. And one of them needs to be, I think, a quarter inch high. The other one needs to be about eighth inch high. The quarter inch one high is gonna go on down in the bottom uh, and the table, it could actually be more than a quarter of an inch. The one that's sticking up an eighth inch is pretty critical on its height. Um, I've got this die kim, and I just want to put some lines on here to kind of work off of, uh, make sure I'm where I want where I need to be. So um, anyway, I've got my caliper set. I did the math, figured out where my two lines need to be to end up with a five eighths inch slot down the center of this, and I'm just going to scribe those two lines on here. And uh, basically that's what we want to leave is that center there. 
and that should be 625. And that's what it looks like. All right, so uh, this is just more for visual reference while I'm working, make sure I don't get over into the area. Uh, we'll actually uh, mill this using the digital readout uh, on the mill machine. I have come in here and uh, taken this mill and just touched off on this back corner back here and I zeroed my DRO and now I know how far I need to come in but I think what I'm going to do is, uh, is uh, I'm going to come in a little bit shy and uh, again we'll do the same thing on the other side using some measurements here and I'm going to measure that slot make sure we're right on where we need to be so I know the diameter of what this cutter is supposed to be and uh, you know, I'm working off of this edge so I'm pretty comfortable but I'm going to probably like I said leave a few thousandths on there so that I can come in and clean it up uh, at the very end. We got the bottom half of this made now. We got the 5 8 inch uh, slot in there. Uh, the slot on this table is a little bit wider than 5 8 but uh, my other mill, that's what it takes, and that's what the original was. That's what we went with. But, uh, as you can see, it fits down in the slot real well. That'll help get us it aligned. So next job is uh, we'll go ahead and have to uh, mill the thickness down, and I'll have to figure out exactly how much we need to take off. And uh, we'll mill another slot just like that that this will register in on the top there uh, to raise this up. And uh, again, it won't be this high, uh, but that's what we're kind of going for and uh, making progress. Let's uh, get it back on the mill and finish this up. We've been working on uh, milling this block down, had a good bit, about three quarters of an inch of material that needed to be removed. And uh, it's just been a time consuming job taking off a little bit of time nibbling away on it. Uh, I did switch out uh, to my other face mill for doing this, mainly because uh, it's got a different geometry on the cutter. It's more of a, uh, a diamond shape, leads into it at a 45 degree angle, as you can probably see on the side there. And for just doing face milling like this, uh, uh, this particular cutter does a really good job, or face mill does a good job. Uh, once we get back in there, and start cutting the shoulders on that uh, indexing tab again. We'll switch back over to the one that has 90 degree shoulders rather than this one that has 45 degree shoulders.
Well guys, we've had a little bit of a bozo moment here. So um, I knew the thickness that we needed to be right here. Um, and I've been measuring that thickness. But what I should have been doing was measuring the thickness to the height of the, uh, the, the T-slot that I want to mill in here. Fortunately, I caught it before I milled away all the material, but unfortunately, um, I'm only about 25 thousandths out. So instead of having a, a, uh, a key or a, a, a um, T-slot that sticks up an eighth of an inch, it's going to stick up about 25 thousandths of an inch. Should be good enough to register it on the, the footstock on the on the piece that I'm making it for. I'm actually going to bolt it in place. So it's really, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's not that big of a deal, but it is a big deal because it's not what I was shooting for. And I'm a little upset with myself for making a bonehead mistake, but oh well, uh, live and move on. So we're going to touch off now, uh, go ahead and, and uh, just take a little bit of material off and I'm going to get a good measurement off this back shoulder here uh, to get this, uh, edge of that T-slot uh, the right distance away from that back side. So let's, uh, let's do it. This should be uh, pretty darn close to the final dimension on that. On depth and this uh, thickness. So as you can see, we got a little T-slot in the bottom of this, and uh, we've milled that little slot in there, and that is a nice fit. I mean, it's registering in there. It's not very high. I, man, I, I really wish that I had that full eighth inch in there, but it's enough to get it registered and in, in on center, and uh, you know, it fits good and tight as far as side-by-side -side movement, so I'm happy with it, uh, but it's not ideal, uh, but again, we're gonna make do with it. So there are a couple of uh, holes up in here. Probably what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and, and drill for those, countersink some socket cap screws in there, and we'll bolt this to that so it, this is uh, snugged up on there good and tight, and uh, that should keep it permanently attached and uh, from moving around. Uh, but I really wish that I had a little more material on there and, hadn't uh, pulled my bozo card out uh, when making this, so it will make do. I'm gonna go ahead and drill the two holes here that will be counterboard from the other side and uh, allow that, that uh, socket cap screw to go through to secure all this together. So I have uh, got everything set up on DRO where I should be able to dial in here, but I've also, probably can't see it in the video, you may be able to, but there's actually some scratch lines in here just for me to verify that I'm in the right place. Um, I trust my DRO, but I like to have lines to verify. We'll just give us a little place to start there. As long as I'm set up for drilling here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, punch a couple of holes in here uh, for the uh, 
hold down screws uh, to go through this. So these will need to be half inch holes. I'll start at quarter and then uh, drill them out to half inch. This will be the position of the first one. Over on the drill press now, we're going to counterbore these. So I have the counterbore in here, and the pile that fits basically the hole that I drilled before, and it puts a step in here that that uh, socket cap screw will just go right down into uh, like this. I've already drilled that one. And I'm going a little bit below the, the surface level there. Uh, I got plenty of room, so. That looks pretty good. There we go. So we're down to final assembly now. So um, hey, well, let's uh, wipe this down real good. That feels good. Wipe this one down real good. And I can feel it in that groove. Drop my socket cap screws. That one has started. That one has started. Let's just tighten them down. All right, I think that is going to fit. So it looks like we got this job pretty well knocked out. Um, the footstock now is at the proper height. And we got a little bit of adjustment up and down in here. This, uh, you can take these screws out and it will uh, adjust and do go to some angles or whatever you need to do. Uh, but it looks like it's pretty darn close. Uh, what we'll have to do is once we get the piece in here, we'll come in here with an indicator and make sure that it's, it's running perfectly uh, true. Uh, but it's fitting in here. Uh, everything's good. Uh, left and right looks like it's lined up pretty darn well. So uh, I think we are ready uh, to start getting this machine set up to cut some gears, finally. So another app on another project. Uh, we had to make a tool to be able to use a tool, uh, so, which I seem to do a lot of. But uh, we got this uh, dividing head. It's all ready to go now. Uh, and we'll come in here in a future episode, show you how to get the dividing head set up, get the milling machine set up, and uh, we're going to start cutting some uh, gears uh, for this blacksmith uh, blower project that I'm working on. Probably post this video as a separate video. It'll be all about the same timeline, but this will probably be a standalone video. Uh, but you can come back and see some gear cutting and see the dividing head uh, in action uh, by looking up some of my gear cutting videos. Thanks for watching, and uh, as always, uh, we'll talk to you later.